today. Today we're dealing with this idea presented from Hildegard of Von Bingen about God being an intimate, personal, connected mystery that surrounds us and loves us and that God's creative power is this greening power of truth. So I thought I needed to be out where we can see the greening. So let's begin with these words from Hildegard. Good people, most royal greening verdancy, rooted in the sun, you shine with radiant light. In this circle of earthly existence, you shine so finely, it surpasses understanding. God hugs you, you are encircled by the arms of the mystery of God. Amen. Praise God. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for God is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. God builds up Jerusalem. God gathers the outcasts of Israel. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God determines the number of the stars. God gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power. God's understanding is beyond measure. God lifts up the downtrodden. God casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to God with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. God covers the heavens with cloud. Prepares rain for the earth. Makes grass to grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor God's pleasure in the speed of a runner. But God takes pleasure in those who fear God, in those who hope in God's steadfast love. Praise God, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For God strengthens the bars of your gates. God blesses your children within you. God grants peace within your borders. God fills you with the finest of wheat. God sends out his command to the earth. God's words run swiftly. God gives snow like the wool. God scatters frost like the ash. God hurls down the hail like crumbs. Who can stand before God's cold? God sends out God's word and melts them. God makes his wind blow and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob. God's statues and ordinances to Israel. God has not dealt with any other nation. They do not know God's ordinances. Praise God.
I don't remember where I got this hat, but I know that I bought it because I thought, ooh, it's an environmental hat. Cause see, you're hugging the tree. I need a hug, not you, me, but the tree. So I bought it a long time ago and I wear it when I go out walking the dog so that they don't burn my nose. I need a hug. For those of us who are living on our own, I think that sentiment's very true. I need a hug. Because it's been since the middle of March for those of us on our own since we've been hugged, since we touched someone else, since we've been able to share that healing and connecting touch with another. I need a hug. Those are some of the words that Hildegard von Bingen speaks to us, but she doesn't speak to us about us needing a hug. She speaks to us about God giving us hugs. God hugs you. You are encircled by the arms of the mystery of God. God hugs you. Can you imagine that? Can you picture the great mystery? God surrounding you and hugging you. Can you picture those arms around you comforting you and caring for you? Can you picture that? God hugs you. Hildegard von Bingen, who we're using to center ourselves this week, had visions from God from the time she was little, before she was five. And when she was 42, she had a vision from God that said to her, transmit for the benefit of humanity an accurate account of what you see. Do you get that? God, even to a middle-aged person, came to Hildegard von Bingen and said, I've been showing these visions to you your whole life. I want you to start writing them down. I want you to start sharing them abroad. I want people to hear and see and experience what I have shared with you. I want them to experience this understanding of God that I'm giving you. But for Hildegard was having an argument with Augustine. So in the tradition of sharing this, Augustine talked about a disembodied, far away God. Someone set apart and away from us, someone distant, someone outside of us. And when Hildegard was experiencing these visions of God, what she saw was a God who comes to us in sight and sound and taste and touch. Taste and see, for the Lord is good. She saw a God, as she said in her symphony of the harmony of heavenly revelations, the fire has its flame and praises God. The wind blows the flame and praises God. In the voice we hear, the word which praises God. And the word when heard praises God. So all of creation is a song of praise to God. All of creation is a song of praise to God. When Hildegard of Bingen talks about God, she created this world word for her spirituality called viriditas, meaning combining the word for green with the word for truth, with the word for revelation. Her idea of spirituality is that there is an animating life force, God, this mystery that manifests in creation, in the natural world, and infuses all creation with vitality, with greenness, with aliveness.
to her, the divine was everywhere. It was in a blade of grass. It was in the soybeans growing in the field. It was in the trees and the birds singing that every leaf, every ray of sunlight, every flower and stone revealed God. Not the whole picture of God, not the mystery of all that God could be, but each part of creation revealed a face and a peace and a moment of God. I, the fiery life of the divine essence, am a flame beyond the beauty of the meadows. I gleam in the waters and I burn in the sun and the moons and the stars. I awaken everything to life. She saw God as palpably real within creation, within us. She saw God, creativity as limitless love that comes from the depths of the stars, flooding all, loving all. She said it's like the royal kiss of peace. For von Bingen, that means that when she thought about spirituality, it wasn't something like many of the others we've seen so far that ask us to step outside of life. She asks us to dive deep into life, to experience the presence and mystery of God in all that is around us. And so many of these revelations that she's given, many of these visions that she describes, both talk about the mystery of God, sharing the wonder of God in the greening of the earth. But she also talks and gives advice about what does that mean to live our real life? What is it like to live as if we believe that that God, that God is this mystery surrounding us, is the creative life force within us, is present in everything from the bugs floating around to the birds singing their songs to the pine needles. That God is present in all, revealing an aspect, a little moment of who God is. But the part that stuck with me as I was reading and trying to figure out what to say was that line from my hat. I need a hug. I need a hug. And then when I started reading and it said to me that Hildegard von Bingen said, God hugs you. You are encircled by the arms of the mystery of God. Can you picture that? Feeling God's presence, feeling God's love flowing through you. God says, if you love me, I'll hug you to me. I'll warm you with the holy fire. As Joan Chittister says, it may not be official theological language, but it should be. God hugs you. Says it all. When we're tired, when we're depressed, when we're exhausted from working so hard, when we're lonely, when we're full of satisfaction with today, but concerned about tomorrow, God hugs you. What else is there to say? God hugs you. God hugs you. Can you picture that theology? Can you understand what that means? That God hugs you. God hugs you and draws you close. It's like that story Jesus told. Do you remember this story? There's this young man who goes to his father and says, I really hate the farm. I hate this place so much. Can you just give me what? you have set aside for me and I will go out into the world and explore and experience and feel and live because I'm not getting it here. And so he sets out into the world and he takes that money and he wastes it. Oh, he spends it on women and food and adventures and gambling and drugs. He spends it on everything that does not bring healing and wholeness. He wastes his money until he's at the point where he's homeless and alone and on the street. And in that moment, in that point where he is alone, he remembers how God, has, how his father has treated people. How his father has always, always treated those who are 
working for him graciously, mercifully. And so he heads back home and in his, on the way home, he's making his plan in his head. He's telling himself all the things he needs to say to convince his father to take him back even though he squandered all that money. He's making it all running through his head, coming up with just the perfect words, just the perfect story. And do you know what happens? That younger son got to the place where the farm was in sight and his father saw him and his father came running when he was still a long way off. His father saw him and felt sorry for him. His father ran to him. His father hugged and kissed him. His father didn't need a story, didn't need an excuse, didn't need an explanation. His father enveloped him with love. Where do you feel dry and brittle? Where do you feel like you could use the presence of God to surround you? Where are you feeling lonely, left out? Where are you feeling as if we can't take any more. We can't take any more. We can't take any more people getting sick. We can't take any more people dying. We can't take any more. In that spot where you are feeling dry and brittle, where you're feeling lost and tired and depressed and exhausted, where you may feel alone, the guard of being and says, God hugs you. God hugs you. What would make you feel alive and fresh again? What would make you experience the power, the greening power, the life-giving power of God? I invite you this week to think about that to explore those areas that can refresh you and recharge you and show you the greenness of God's created world that can make you feel alive in the wonder of the mystery of God and in those places that hurt, in those places full of pain. Stop and feel the presence of God. Feel God's love. Feel God's hug. Feel that warm, holy fire. Feel encircled by the arms of the mystery of God. Amen. Let us pray. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. I invite you to breathe in and breathe out. I invite you to think about this. You are encircled by the arms of the mystery of God. You are encircled by the arms of the mystery of God.
God hugs you. There are so many changes going on right now in the world. So many things that are so different. God hugs you. As we see statues fall, as we see arguments over what is our history and who is included and who is excluded, and we learn things that we never knew about people we admired, God hugs you. God hugs you this weekend as we think about what it means to be American, as we think about what it means to belong to the United States of America, as we celebrate independence, as we think about what that calls us to be and do, as we think about those values that we claim to be our own of freedom and justice and liberty of welcome and equality. God hugs us. As we think about those American values and we know that we've fallen short, we've excluded people, we've ignored people, we've kept people out, God hugs us. God hugs us as we think about all those who are out in the streets to this day protesting. And it's not about the police. It's not just about the police. It's about the daily indignities of being called a name as you walk down the street, of having people cross the street to get away from you, of being spit on, of the daily indignity of being treated as if you are not human as they cry out for that basic right, that equality and freedom we promise. That's who we want to be as America. And in that, God hugs us. God hugs us as we deal with the loss of close friends and family, as we deal with those family members and friends and friends of friends who are sick, as COVID-19 comes close to our circle. We ask you, God, to hug us, to surround us with the mystery that is you, to encircle us with your mystery, to enfold us in your love. As we pray together the prayer that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, the life that gives life, you are the cause of all movement, you are the breath of all creatures, you are the salve that purifies our souls, you are the ointment that heals our wounds, you are the fire that warms our hearts, you are the light that guides our feet. Let all the world praise you. Amen.
we keep from singing. When deep down, despite the contradictions, we know, we sense, we believe that life is good. When one of your words rings truer than ever before, when one unexpected moment we are given a glimpse of your kingdom, gracious God, how can we keep from singing? In this place where prayer has been made for many years, in this place where so many different people have found their common bond in your call and purpose, in this place where the walls are waiting to echo your praise, how can we keep from singing? And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember Jesus, who came because words weren't enough, setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands. We yearn for your healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Jesus alone can offer. Let us pray. We remember him. We remember that on the night he was handed over to the unjust system that killed him, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. There he took bread, gave thanks to God for providing it, gave thanks that God shared his love, and he gave it to his friends, feeding them and called them to remember the injustice of his broken body every time they ate bread. And after they ate, he took a cup and he gave thanks for God for providing it. And he shared God's love with his friends by giving it to them. And then he called them to remember the injustice of his spilled blood every time they drank the wine. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, be poured out on this bread and wine, on these gifts of love, bread and wine, that we may remember Jesus' ministry of love, that these gifts of love may show mercy and do justice, not just for for ourselves, but for the transformation of the world. Amen. The bread of heaven filled with God's love. Take and eat. Let us pray. Holy One, we are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your hope. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. Experience the mystery and presence of God enfolding you with that love in a love that encircles you and holds you. 
breathe deep and experience the taste and wonder of God. Amen. Thank you.